सो हे गाइस वेलकम टू माय चैनल आई एम संतोष एंड हियर इन माय चैनल आई डिस्कस टॉपिक्स फ्रॉम फिजिक्स एंड मैथमेटिक्स एज यूजुअल टुडे आई एम हियर विद वन मोर न्यू वीडियो फॉर यू गाइस एंड इन दिस वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस अ न्यू चैप्टर फ्रॉम क्लास 11 फिजिक्स एंड दैट इज मोशन इन अ स्ट्रेट लाइन गाइस दिस चैप्टर मोशन इन अ स्ट्रेट लाइन विल बी कवर्ड इन सीरीज ऑफ वीडियोस एंड दिस इज फर्स्ट एंड इंट्रोडक्टरी वीडियो सो इन दिस वीडियो आई विल बी ओनली डिस्कसिंग अबाउट फोर पॉइंट्स एंड दे आर नंबर 1 definition of motion and rest along with their examples number 2 mechanics and its branches number 3 different types of motions number 4 concept of point object guys these are the concepts or the points which you can expect from this video so without wasting much of our time let's get started guys let us begin our discussion with a very basic question that is what is motion Guys, in physics, motion is defined as change of position of an object with time. It is defined as change of position of an object with time. In other words, if an object changes its position with time, then we say that object is in motion. If an object changes its position with time, then we say that object is in motion. For example, here I have this marker, and this is the position of the marker. And if of this marker changes its position with time, then we say that the marker is in motion and this is one of the examples of motion similarly if you look around yourself you will find several examples of objects in motion for example people walking on the road is an example of motion kids running in the ground is an example of motion vehicles moving on the road is also an example of motion birds flying in the sky is an example of motion and finally water flowing in the river is an example of motion now naturally one more question arises here what do we say what do we say if an object does not change its position with time guys answer to this question is we say that object is at rest if it does not changes its position with time we say that the object is at rest so example of object at rest is this wall here which is behind me this is not changing its position with time this is not changing its position with time and again if you look around yourself you will find several examples of objects at rest the chairs and tables in your house are at rest and in fact your house is at rest because it does not change its position with time guys one thing to note here is that the definitions of motion and rest which i have given now are the basic definitions these are not the complete definitions the complete and the correct definitions will be discussed in the next video Guys, in physics, the study of objects in motion or at rest comes under a branch known as mechanics. And this branch, mechanics, can be further divided into two categories. Number one, classical mechanics. Number two, quantum mechanics. Guys, classical mechanics is the branch which studies the motion of macroscopic objects. Classical mechanics is the study of motion of macroscopic objects. What do you mean by macroscopic objects? Guys, these are the objects. which we can see from our eyes for example it can be a small cricketing ball or else it can be a bigger object like uh, the star or a planet so these all come under classical mechanics on the other hand quantum mechanics is the study of motion of microscopic objects quantum mechanics is the study of motions of microscopic objects for example here in quantum mechanics we study the motion of small objects like electrons and one more difference between these two categories is that classical mechanics is one of the first and the oldest branches in physics and on the other hand quantum mechanics is more recent branch in physics and everything that we study in this chapter comes under the classical mechanics and this classical mechanics is further divided into two categories now one is statics and the other one is dynamics and statics is the study of objects under rest here in statics we study objects under rest and also forces acting on these object under rest on the other hand in dynamics we study about objects in motion and also forces acting on the objects and the dynamics is further classified into two categories one is kinematics and the other one is kinetics guys kinematics is the study of motion of an object without studying its cause kinematics is the study of motion of an object without studying its cause guys cause of motion is the force acting on that object cause of motion is the force acting on the object which is moving 
and in kinematics we don't care about that force we don't study about that forces uh, we only study about how that object is moving on the other hand in kinetics we study about how a particular object is moving and what are the forces acting on that object we study both motion as well as the cause of the motion in kinetics and this chapter motion in a straight line comes under this chapter motion in a straight line comes under kinematics and in this chapter we study about how an object is moving in a straight line how fast it is moving how far it is moving and what is the time taken by object to move from one place to another place but we don't care about the forces acting on the object guys all the different kinds of motion that we see around us can be classified into three categories and they are number one motion in a straight line which is also known as motion in one dimension and number two motion in a plane which is also known as motion in two dimensions and number three motion in a space which is also known as motion in three dimensions guys now let us understand each type of motion with the help of an example first let us see an example for motion in a straight line here we have a thin wire that is tied to two different walls a thin wire that is tied to two different poles and on that wire we have an ant moving from one end to another end now if you observe the motion of an ant it has only two options right either move forward or come backwards so these kind of motions these kind of motions where the path is only the straight line or the motion is motion itself is restricted to a straight line are known as motion in a straight line and one more example of motion in a straight line can be an athlete moving in the straight track and next moving to an example of motion in two dimensions or motion in a plane we have a lizard moving on the wall a lizard moving on the wall now if you observe the motion of lizard it has more options compared to the previous example of an ant lizard can move forward and backward on the wall and it can also move sideways sideways so here the motion of an object is restricted to a plane a plane surface that is wall in this case so these are this is the example of motion in a two dimension and finally for an example of uh, finally for motion in three dimension let us consider uh, the motion of a house fly guys house fly flying in your room house fly flying in your room has more options compared to the previous examples right it can move forward it can move backwards it can move sideways and it can even move upwards and downwards so basically it can move in three different dimensions so this is the example of motion in three dimension guys since we live in a three dimensional space most of the motions that we see around us come under this category of motion in a three dimension so now i will give you a small task where you need to write an example for each kind of motion write it down in the comment section below now in the last part of this video let us discuss about the concept of point object guys point object is an object which has mass but no size point object is an object which has mass but no size and it is represented by a point or a dot but if you look around yourself you will find that every object every object however small it is has some size for example even the tip of the pen which is so small has some size so practically speaking there is no such thing as point object exists it is just an assumption that we make while studying the motion of an object now the question is when do we make such an assumption guys when the size of an object when the size of an object is much much smaller than the distance it covers in a reasonable amount of time then we can ignore the size of that object and treat that object as a point object so only when the size of an object is very very small compared to the distance it covers then we can treat the object as a point object i'll make it more clearer to you by giving an example consider yourself walking inside your room consider yourself walking inside your room for a while now if you compare the size of your body that is your height with the distance that you covered inside your room there is no big difference there is no big difference in this case you cannot treat your body as a point object in this case you cannot treat your body as a point object on the other hand consider yourself moving from your house to your school which is 5 km away now in this case the size of your body is much much smaller compared to distance you cover that is 5 km now in this case you can treat your body as a point object ignoring the size of the body 
So treating the body as a point object basically depends upon the distance it covers rather than the actual size of the body. So which means in some cases you cannot treat the small objects as a point objects. However, in other cases you can treat the bigger objects as a point object because they cover large distance. Guys, now let us look at the following four situations where objects are in motion. And we need to tell whether these objects can be treated as point objects or not. Situation number one, a railway carriage moving without jerks between two stations. Guys, if you look at the size of a railway carriage, it is huge. And usually the size of the railway carriage is between 15 to 20 meters. But in this example, if you compare the size of the railway carriage, which is the object with the distance that it is covering, which is the distance between two stations. Usually the distance between two stations is few hundred kilometers. Now the size of an object is few meters and the size of distance or the distance between distance that it is covering is few hundred kilometers. So in this case, the size of an object is much, much smaller compared to the distance that it is covering. So we can treat the railway carriage as a point object in this case. Guys, situation number two. A monkey sitting on top of a man cycling smoothly on a circular track. Guys, again, if you look at the size of a monkey, it is big. But if you compare it with the, uh, the distance that it is covering in a circular track, it is very, very small. So in the, here in this case also, we can treat the monkey that is object as a point object because the distance that it is covering is large compared to its size. Guys, now let us look at situation number three. A spinning cricket ball that turns sharply on hitting the ground. Guys, if you take a cricket ball and throw it in the air with little spin on it, what happens is when it hits ground, it will take a sharp turn. Basically, what is happening here is it is moving away from the expected path. So it is deviating. Now here the object is cricket ball and the motion under consideration is the deviation that it takes from its actual path. So if we compare the deviation and the size of the ball, both are comparable. There is no much different difference. So in this case, we cannot treat the cricket ball as a point object. Guys, now let us look at situation number four. A tumbling beaker that has slipped off the edge of the table. Guys, here in this case, a beaker has fallen down from the top of the table. Now, if you compare the size of the beaker with the height from which it has fallen, so both are again comparable. There is no much difference. So in this case also, we cannot treat the beaker as a point object because the size of the object is comparable to the distance that it has covered. Guys, with this, we come to the end of this video. If you like the video, please hit the like button and share this video with your friends. And most importantly, please subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon so that you will always be notified whenever I drop a new video. And guys, finally, if you have any suggestions or queries, please put it down in the comment section below. So guys, thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next video.